Torah is so important because everyone needs to say Tehillim right now. This is exactly what we mentioned just now about the missiles coming to Eretz Yisrael instead of the fireworks. I mean, not that we should really be celebrating the new year, but nevertheless, we want to have like a positive moment, whatever reason it is. And instead, we're getting missiled at. Like Simchas Torah was meant to be the happiest day of the year, and it became the most tragic day of the year, and in history almost. Yeah. Oh. So we have a power right now during Shabbatim. This this time period, and that's why we're going to learn this Torah. Is it Ayin Gimel? It's Ayin Gimel, but it's in the second part of Lukutamaron. There's Lukutamaron regular, and there's Lukutamaron Tanyanya. It's the set. Uh. It's like the second sefer of Lukutamaron. Why he divided it up, I'm not 100 percent sure. Maybe he already taught the main Torahs, and and then there was more to add. So he made a second sefer. Um, exactly what the history is, I don't know. But the main point is Shabbatim. That we are now in a time of Shavuot, and this Torah, straight away at the end as well, of this Torah brings the pasuk from this week's parsha Shmos, and it gives us a hint of what we're supposed to be doing during this time period, especially the the concept of going to Mitzrayim. Mitzrayim represents Golas. I'm Israel now as a nation. We're no longer uh, uh, Masa Avos. All the stories of the Avos, Avram, Yitzchak, Yaakov, Yosef, and the sons. Mm-hmm. We're now dealing with. Am Yisrael, Moshe, and the, and the Am of Bnei Yisrael, and we're a nation. We're now into a public level, not just a private experience. We're now, it's not just about our family. This is now about a nation that has an impact on the world. And Mitzrayim has enslaved us, and we have to figure out how to get out of that. And it's the same right now. How do we get out of this war successfully? How are we going to get through this goddess at the end of days? So he's going to tell us the key is, and remember, the whole key to uh, Golas to bring Gula is tshuva, and this that's why Shavuot is a special gift to help us do tshuva at the end of days. It's like an extension of Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur Sukkot. Whatever we didn't do then, whatever we didn't do Simchas Torah, which we definitely didn't do everything then, whatever we didn't do Hanukkah, whatever we didn't, all the special times we've had this New Year of Tashim Pei, Pei Dalid, whatever part we haven't done, we now get to do in Shavuot and we get to fix it up through tshuva. Mm. So let's go. I am giving me. So who who wants to be merit tshuva, yeah? repentance? He has to be accustomed to saying to him. Mm. So you want to do tshuva, like you talk about ballet tshuva and this whole thing, tshuva movement. And, and it, I even heard apparently that it's not really such a vibrant movement like it used to be when I first came. Mm. Uh, that's the the talk of the day. Like uh, if you hear a podcast, a rabbi just said yesterday on a podcast, it's a gosis, like it's hardly moving. Like I don't know if it's that extreme, but it's uh, it's it's not like it was when I came to Israel. It was every she was packed with balit tshuva, everyone the, the light yeah. tshuva. It's a different avodah. I think it's more tshuva on the tshuva right now. That's my right. opinion. Meaning like all of the balit tshuvas have to do tshuva, whatever tshuva they did then, because it wasn't real like deep it was more like you know happy families happy days you know everyone's smiling and that was more like external tshuva now you have to do real tshuva through the pain through the hurt through the struggle of goddess through the mm-hmm. intensity of the technology it's also the tshuva within you know the greater whole of our so yeah we all need to do tshuva the whole of just the one needs itself. to do tshuva the mizrahi yeah. one everyone needs to do tshuva it's not just a ballet tshuva it's everybody that's interesting yeah it definitely is. The Balchuva movement is not really, uh, I don't know, numbers, but it doesn't feel like it's as popular as it was yeah. 30 years ago. Yeah. Now it's like kind of, uh, the movement today is the the, the, the chuba within it, the, the, the chuba for the uh, the religious community, the yeah. film community. A lot of uh, Balchuva shivas now filled up with from from birth people needing right. to do chuba. <laughs> no, I remember when we came in the first movie, my wife wanted to sign up to go to Aish. She wanted to go to the classes there. Yeah. You know, a lot of the, these the, the shurim that are there now are catered more to like yep. the mainstream chavra. So here he's saying the way you're going to do tshuva is, is, is through Tehillim. Um, well, we'll get, let's see what he says, and I'm going to add on a little bit it's like, it's based on Chazal. The lezakos, the tshuva. Yeah. Yeah, you're right, to merit. It's, it's mm-hmm. a merit. It's not something which is like, what are going to happen if you don't, you have to merit it. You have right. to do the certain. Sure, like I mean, Moshe Benu. This is just another ingredient. Yeah. In the, in the process of tshuva. So. Yeah. 
Moshe Ben, it wasn't guaranteed he was going to become the Maneg of Amiso. He mm -hmm. showed the right elements, like he, he cared about the sheep of Yisro and he looked after them, so then he ended up by the snare and had that whole revelation. If he hadn't been caring for the sheep fully, like he just let them go and said, let the wolf have that one, who cares, yeah? Like he wasn't fully like compassionate and caring for God's creator and then he wouldn't have been become the Maneg, the leader. He had, you have to be zakut. You have to do them, have the merit. You have to show the compassion and the consideration, the care for a person, like to to become that leadership position. So that that same with tshuva, you have to show that you're a vessel for it. Like it's it's not just going to come. Kemiras right. tehillim masugul lechuva. By saying tehillim, this is masugul lechuva. And the whole Indian of segula and masugul, like we have to understand. But the main thing is it makes us. Uh, Fitting like it, masugul lechuva means like. Uh, let's just see the translation here because it's, it's always. Helpful. I mean, I would say like fitting kind of thing, but it's, he says propitious. Pro, I, I'm not so familiar with that word. word. It's propitious. Yeah, propitious. Like it's fitting. I, I, that's how I would translate it. Um, he teaches the person sinners. What is the sinner's punishment? Yeah, so the problem is, like, if you're doing mitzvah leads to mitzvah, if you do a vera leads to a vera. So you have to create a, a kli, you have, to, you have to remove some of the obstacles to be able to get to tshuva. So to heal him. giving or indicating a good chance of success. Okay. It's, it's like a masugul, it's like a segula. Like, it opens up the doors for that success. Yeah. You, can, you can sense what it means by the fact that we use it as loshen segula, am segula, a successful nation. Yeah. nun. Shari Tshuva. Now this is really, really important and relevant right now for where we're at because there is the Nun Shari Tshuva. Now, have you heard of this concept of Nun Shari? Uh, Tuma, Nun Shari Tshuva, Nun Shari Bina. It's, uh, it's a deep uh, concept, but it's important to know. Nun Shari Tuma, right? That's, that was from the, the Yidin when they left Mitzrayim. So they hadn't gone into that yet. Right, they were at the Memtes. Yeah, they were at Memtes. I'm going to say that in a minute. We, we hadn't yet gone to such a low level I only feel like we're all in a state of memtes. So that the, I asked Sadiqim about this, so I'll draw a door, and they said we're nun shari tuma, a farish. Mm. We are in the lowest level of tuma, but the good news is we have the Torah. The only reason we're allowed to be in this level of tuma is because we have the Torah that's going to get us out of it. Nice. So we are in a worse state than they were in Mitzrayim. Mm. Mitzrayim, they were only memtes. We're in nun. But then that gives us the ability, as we're going to see, nun shari tuma. We're also now accessing. It's always a balance. Nun, we're that's where like a mikvah is also important. Mikvah, tehillim. Does our mikvah have like uh, mem kabim? Mem kabim. Yes, yeah, mem. mem but it but it gives a certain level of connection to this concept of tikvah mm. of hope. Mem tes sharim yochel ko adam lechanes behem la sigam. So mem tes sharim. There are forty nine gates. And every person's able to enter into them and to understand them. So then we're talking about now the positive side. Yeah, the forty-nine <laughs> gates of tshuva. <laughs> he can enter into <laughs> those gates and understand them. And what Meaning, are these sha'aram? Those are the, the of tshuva. Yeah, there's apparently there's forty-nine gates. That not that you and me are so familiar, but there is, for example, there's a book called Sefer called Shari Tshuva, Gates of Tshuva. Right. That book actually saved me from doing an Avera once. Right. Uh, can I say the story? You mind? It's sure, interesting. Go for it. I was sitting in a park in London, and I was still a fresh bat tshuva, and uh, an ex-girlfriend happened to be in the same park, and she was always bad news for me. Like you know, like always ended up Shem Shemena. She was on my firm. She was on my yet to her when I was trying to do tshuva. She would, and thank God, different people, different times of why me stay away from her, and because um, there was a lot of energy between us, and. Um, what happened? So she was there in the park. I was in the park. I was alone, and I looked. Into, I was playing the guitar. I looked into my guitar case, and I, a friend of mine, before I left to go to England, had given me the book Shai Tshuva, and I managed to mind put it into my guitar case. Open up the book, and it's on this challenge about being alone in a place and with a woman and a whole thing. And it was exactly that point. Wow! And it like shined to me that moment that the Shem was testing me, and I. Passed the test by opening up that book and reading what I need to read, and I just pick, picked up my guitar and left, and nothing happened. I didn't even say hello. I just left. Mm. It didn't wow, even create that. And that was crazy. that was the Shem sending me the right book, the right time Shai Tshuva, to help me do Tshuva literally. Um, so that was very obvious, yeah. But the idea that we these forty nine gates that you can enter into them and do Tshuva, 
and be able to access and understand them. Mm. So we have ability this, but once you get ach hamishim who bechinas tshuva shah hashem So once you get to that fiftieth level, this fiftieth gate, this is the aspect of tshuva shah hashem in himself, whatever that means. Kibiyachol. Yeah, not that we, he says loshin kibiyachol, as if. What does it mean? As if we really understand Hashem doing tshuva. What does that mean? Who bechinas at tshuva shall Hashem? I mean, this is the tshuva of Hashem. Yeah, I warned you. That's reserved deep. us for Him. How the, yeah, but that's such a deep kind of what Hashem doing tshuva. Right. I, I've never seen that before, like in a sefer. Like that's a deep. I mean, nothing brings the deepest to deep. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I mean, you can read it in English, but it's going to help. I'm just like, trying to even understand how yeah. that even makes sense. Yeah, it doesn't. It, that that's the point. It's nun shari tshuva. It's nun shari bina. It's the highest levels beyond understanding. Ah. That I is the point. The next pasuk kind of gives it that next. Yeah, ki gam etz lo yisbach matzino bechinas tshuva, and also next to a kodesh baruch we find there's an aspect of tshuva. It doesn't mean like you know he's doing tshuva like we have to do tshuva. It's Hashem's tshuva is a whole other right. uh, concept. But kamosh kosov it says in the pasuk malachi, yeah, malachi remembers the last novi. By the way, oh, you should know that. It's important to put in context who these people are who we're reading. So right. Yermiyal, when we mentioned earlier, Yermiyal, he was like the f- one of the first Nevi'im of Chorban, and it made sense what we learned from Elian Novi. He was like talking about Mashiach. So there's right. like that in the first Novi of, of destruction is going to give us that hope there's going to come a time a prophet Eliyahu and Yisrael, Yehuda are going to get out of this goddess. This is the last Novi. That means he was the last like bye-bye from Hashem of Nevoah talking to us direct, and therefore his Nevoah is very shy to our generations, because he's the last one. He's like the last Rebbe before we go off on our own, kind of thing. So, so this is the Malachi, the last Novi. What did he say? Shuva alai va shuva aleichem. You return to me, and I'll return to you. Isn't mm-hmm. that a nice concept? And this is, you can see already the Lashon Shavavim in this passage. Yeah? Right. Shin, remember, what is Shavavim? It's Rosh Tevis, Shmos, mm-hmm. Vayera, Boy, Bashalach, Yisro, Mishpotim. And they add this year because of a leap year, Taf, Tat, Chuma Tetzaveh, the two, two parts from the Mishkan and the, and the Kohen Godel. So we, because of a leap year. So it's really eight well, this weeks. This year's a... Uh, a leap year, yeah. Okay, Next year, That's it. So it's good times. Wow. I didn't know that. That's why it's extra time for us to learn a bit more before we get to Pesach. Yeah. Which, interestingly, the next Torah is about Purim, so... The the concept of Shavavim and Purim go together. So, just again, just so. Yeah. Uh, Shuva lie, return to me, and return to, and I'll I'll return to you. That's what Shem says. So Shem's doing Shuva. You hear that? That's the yeah. the raya that Malachi is bringing. That Shem is do is connected to the concept of Shuva himself. Kibiyochu. Right. We have to say Kibiyochu because we can't understand it. Mm-hmm. Was this Shem do Shuva? Right. So. It, it, it's it's a high concept, but it, one of the things we have to realize is that Shem does everything for us. He we don't he doesn't need to do it for himself intrinsically. Everything he does is for us. That's that in itself is the hugest lesson. Complete selflessness. Mm-hmm. Uh, he he built he created us to be a giver, in the ultimate sense, to be to to be mashpir to give over, and that our hope is to become more godly and for us to become a mashpir to give over. So we have, Hashem gives us a wife, gives us kids, gives us a, a sphere of influence, gives us opportunity to become like Hashem on a certain level. Mm-hmm. Obviously not the Gamre, but on a certain level to, to, to davik to Hashem. How do we become close to Hashem? By becoming more like Hashem in, in our midot, and becoming a giver, Hashem Shemayim. And this is, the, this is a very deep concept, but you shall return to me and I'll return to you. Right. He's Ke'ilu doing tshuva for our sake so that he, we can do tshuva. But that's how much he loves us. He doesn't need to right. do tshuva, but he's doing it for us. Like an right, example. Like an interesting idea here. Yeah. Right? There's 50 shari okay. tuma. Yeah. And so essentially this 50 shari sha'arim of we'll call it tshuva. Oh, bina. Yeah, tshuva. Bina. That, that's what's referred to, bina? Yeah, nun shari bina is connected to nun shari tshuva. It's the same concept. Bina and tshuva. It's the same. Bina and tshuva are the same shorish. Ah, okay. Because tshuva, bina is itim, the concept of... Bina is a meter of understanding, of fixing. Yeah? It's, it's making sense of things. So Nun Shai Bina is beyond understanding, just like Nun Shai Chuva is beyond understanding. It's the highest right. level. But the point is it has within it the essential link of, right. of Bina 
intense understanding brings it to most intense levels of tshuva. It's 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 one it's one concept in my opinion from my understanding from years of learning. It doesn't he hasn't said that here. I'm just throwing it right. in just because you've heard probably the Ninshai Bina concept as well. It's connected. Um, the Hashem gives us this these fifty gates of Bina as well of understanding. And in the the pella is here. We don't even understand the fiftieth. That's what's so deep. Right. Because Hashem's doing tshuva at that fiftieth gate. Right, but it's also like almost a. Um like a finish line. Sometimes I always wonder, like, what's at the end of the road, right? So it's like when you finish your ticket, whatever that m- might be, if that ever can be. Like, what's I always wonder, like, what is at the end of the road? So you finish all of the Torah, you finished everything, you did your Vayis Hashem, right? You're at the highest of levels, right? And, th- and so then what? So it says in the Gemara, Brach is Chayel al What we're we gonna do in Alam Haba after 120 and everything's to a good place, you're just going to go higher and higher, deeper and deeper. Right. This is the so infinite. Saying, it's so, infinite. Right. So that's right. There's a concept of the infinite, but I'm saying within ourselves, you know, if we're going in terms of, let's say, like there, there's a, like Tuma is not a bottom, bottomless pit, right? We can get to the bottom and then we're at our bottom. Yeah. That's I why. Mean, I, there's concepts like in. Uh, that's probably where we're at now. There's concepts in. Uh, at the lowest point. In recovery, right? So in people who are. Yeah, hit rock bottom. Hit rock bottom. And you have to let them do that. And you have to let them do you, that. That is actually the best thing you can do, is not yeah. enable them to contar- carry on this addiction, right. but to let them hit rock bottom. That and is. And there's another concept, like within that, where they say, how do you know, like, how do you know when you reach your bottom, right? So how, how do I know when I'm at the men shari tama, or the nun shari tama? Yeah. Uh, and the answer is, your nun shari tama is where you stop digging. <laughs> Great, and the only way out is up right. to Hashem to to allow a higher power to help you out of it. And then it's almost like at the end of the road, which is what we have to do now. We have to let Hashem save us. At that nun, yeah, share bina, Hashem says. By the way, the the finish line, that last you know, ten yards till you get into the end zone yeah. is a American football reference. I I got it. It's like this this, this is my job. Yeah. Like this, this is at that point I take over and I do the last ten, ten, you know. Yeah. So Hashem, you concept. return to Hashem, and I'll return to you. You're right. right. That's exactly understanding this pasuk. It right. really is. Hashem, we need Hashem to return to us, because we're returning to Him. But the problem is, I did tshuva. I literally changed my life. I was living a secular life completely, right. and I gave up like a secular uh, lifestyle. And it's not like I joined a cult or anything. I definitely didn't. I, I took on the all of Torah and I tried to understand halacha and I tried to connect to Hashem direct with 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 Amun and guidance from the Rabbonim. But the bottom line is, like, there's only so much I could do. I need Hashem to return to me. I come. Right. I'm at that point right now. Literally, I would be honest with you. As a, on a person, I don't care if people hear it. I, I'm 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 very I'm not afraid of people hearing my journey. If I feel right now we're at a point, a most breaking point, as a family, that we need Hashem now to come and and take us to the next stage. Mm. Like we've done everything we can, as as a family, as individuals. Like my son right now, and as are the only ways to get through is completely with Hashem's help. Mm. He's he's trained, he's done all he can, but he's in a place where you right. need completely Hashem to save you. Yeah, Which and I like, feel that as a family. Right. Like I'm totally dependent on Hashem. Panasa. It doesn't matter what a status I do, it's only from Hashem. Like, right. it doesn't make a difference. I've got a business, so what? Yeah, business, business. It's all Hashem. He's going to put money into it, no money into it. He's going to put money from somewhere else. It's all Hashem. And I, I'm at that point. Shalom bias, finding a new home that we're more happy in. All Hashem. I, the, all the scenarios to live in Eretz soul. I need Hashem to help me live in this country. I can't do it myself. It's beyond right. me. I can't man, manage the way the finances are here and everything else is beyond me. It's, it's too challenging. So I need Hashem to help me. I'm not, I'm not saying everyone's in that position, for me personally. So right. I need Hashem to help me in every single one of these things. And I, I'm, I'm saying that to Hashem. My wife and I, we talk about it all the time. We need Hashem. We, we, get, we, we talk through our challenges and we say the only answer is Hashem is going to help us because we do not have any more now. We've done everything. We've given everything as parents, as a, Shalom Bias, as individuals in Israel, as trying to be involved in the Jewish community. We've done everything we can do. Right. Yeah, I reach out to people day after day after day. Only Hashem is the one who's going to make it work. It's only Hashem. Mm. 
and it's it's very humbling. That's also an Indian in in Eretz Yisrael, by the way. Yeah, I find that uh, in America, well, you feel like you're running it. Your America is like the, the what's like uh, America. This isn't a a uh, a a. a uh, I don't to say like Chas Shalom something bad about the people of America, right? Sure. Like my Rebbe lives in America. Sure, sure. And I hold my Rebbe to be the, the to me, he's like he told me to jump off a bridge, I jump off a bridge. Well, sure, I mean, yeah, yeah. and so, so um, I think though that, that the Gullus of America is is, the, is that in Israel, in Eretz Yisrael, like you have no choice. Someone told me this before moving here, he's like the only currency that's important in Eretz Yisrael is the currency of Amuna. He's like no one, nothing, no other currency matters. It's true. He's like it's the only currency that's going to get you through your days. It's true. Because um, I remember he, this guy lives in lives in Tekoa. Yeah. And I asked him. I was like, "Aren't you nervous, Tekoa?" And he was yeah. like, "He's like you don't live with that type of fear. He's like your, yeah. your currency is a Muna." And so. And yeah, that, America, that's what's getting me. That. Without when I'm weak in a Muna, that's when I'm falling here. It's literally the only way to to go up. Yeah, is a right, you have no other choice. It's and like that's a that's what Hashem's saying. Return to me, and I'll return to you. It's a relationship. Right. It, it's that's how intense it is. You're having a real relationship with a Kodesh Baruch Hu. It's not like, uh, right. you know, today I don't feel like it. You know, I'm right. gonna, it's New Year's to last night. I'm gonna just go to Las Vegas and party, and I'll come back to you, Hashem. No, there was no party. We were getting missiles thrown at us. Yeah? Right. We're returning to you, Hashem. There's no, there's no way out. Yeah. Well, yeah. That's yesterday. I went with my wife to a shiva. Yeah. Of a parents, very young couple, whose seven month year old kid, like just one morning or one day, I just didn't wake up, and just a healthy kid, and just didn't wake up. No. And this couple, they no, just, they you just see them, they're just like in Harnof, and they are like the Amuna. It's like, uh, it's they have no other choice right now, and these people are like, Giborim, as R- 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 Shlomo would say, they're just like, yeah. Like I looked at them and I was like, "How are you guys it's just beyond. even?" I think this is literally what we're learning here is to that fiftieth level. It makes no sense, right? It makes no sense what the what people are doing right now, the reactions to things happening in their life. That lady who got up, I didn't watch the whole video, but talking about her husband, and and you know she went through this avalus and. The Muna they're talking with, it's from this 50th level. It makes right. no sense. It's beyond. I also, I also wonder if it's like so linear too. Right? Sometimes you think about like the Mem Shari, the Nun Shari Tema, and now the Nun Shari Bina. And it's almost like, I, I wonder if like this, this idea of you have to be there, you have to go through it one, two, three, four, five, or it's like, no, you can get to Nun Shari Tema. There's a, you know, you know, the game shoots and ladders. Yeah. You can like, just take a ladder and you go from the top of the board to the I bottom. I think Shuva is connected to that very and much. It's the same idea, I think. Is that like you don't have to? Because I didn't grow up with Yiddishkeit, so how did right. I get to where I'm at right now? Because Hashem wow. took me to a higher level. Not that I'm on a big level. I like I've met all those Rabbanim I mentioned before, but like I, on my level, I I went from very, you know, like I go example. Let's the practical thing. Growing up, you think masturbation is something good to do. Yeah, right. Healthy, they say. Health factors. Hooking up with girls, you're James Bond. You know, that's right. the goal. Yeah, Playboy. Yeah. Right. Now you start doing tshuva, and I did this even before I was keeping Torah mitzvahs. I started to stop masturbating, and I stopped hooking up with girls. I even told girls who were trying to hook up with me that I'm, unless it's going to go to the next level of like serious relationship, marriage, I can't do anything. And I did that in university. Even I, I don't know where it's coming from. I just suddenly felt there needs to be the real thing or nothing. Yeah. And where's that come from? A secular person. I never got educated that that's the mindset. Never came in. Maybe I saw it from my parents, and they were they were loyal to each other, married. So I at least had them as role models. I didn't have like around me that role model. So why was I talking that way to girls? Like literally, they would come into my room and say, "No, unless you want to go to the next level of seriously, I'm not interested." And they would be insulted, like I'm rejecting them. But really, right. it was because I wanted the real thing, and the real thing was my soulmate, which I not that long later came to yeshiva in Israel and found it. But that serious. Like Watson, it was that jumping up, like you said, it's like it was a ladder that took me to a higher place. And it came from the Neshama, it came from right. Hashem. Hashem returned to me, I returned to him, he returned to me. It was like this very fast moving experience of return, right. of tshuva. And it, it, just not, it, wasn't step, it wasn't by step. Now, there is going to be, this is according to the Arizo, there's going to be this big godless reason where Hashem reveals himself to you and takes you very high, very quick. 
Uh-huh. Now what's the next step? Now you have to go back to what you're, you were saying before, building step by step. Right. Now you have to go back and rebuild everything before that properly. Hmm. And that's, Gadla, that's called Cutler Shaney. And then you get to Gadler Shaney where you've made your own acquisition, where now it's no longer only Hashem taking you up there. You've, you've acquired these steps. Hmm. But once you get to the 50th again, it's, it's, the truth is that you're, it's all Hashem. It's all, it's all a gift. It's all Matana. So that, that's the 50th level, that, and that's Hashem returning to us. Now this is another very powerful concept. How many letters are there in the 12 tribes? So Rabbi Nachman is telling us that the 49th gate of Tshuva is the aspect of the 49 letters that are in the names of the 12 tribes. And he doesn't just call them the 12 tribes, he calls them the, the tribes of God. Right. Shift they ka yud k, and remember we learn in like shvatim as in the Reuven Shimon. Yes, the twelve tribes: Reuven Shimon Levi, um, Yehuda, Yisachar Zvulin, and, and, and the other six. Yeah, uh, Gad, Osha, Naftali, you know, etc. Binyamin, Menashe, Ephraim, all the different tribes. Yeah. So those twelve tribes, if you take all those letters of the names, are the shift they ka. Now the yud and the k is the shame of the shechina. And the Yud K we see in Pasha's Bamid, Basafa Bamidbar again and again when it lists the tribes, when it's numbering the tribes, it always brings a Yud and a K before and after the names of the tribes, or of the leaders of the tribes, to show you the Shekhinahs with Am Yisrael. This is a concept, it's called the Shifte Ka. It's, it's not just a whatever tribes, right. it's, it's the God's, tribes of God. It's a godly tribe. Kikol Shah, Vashah, Yeshla, Os, Memtes, Osius, Ashwatim. And in every Shah, there is an, a letter from the 49 letters of the Shvatim, of the tribes. And behold, everyone who wants to fear your name, Hafeitzim, everyone who wants to fear your name, So he's saying that it's basically it's open to everyone. This, this, these right. gates of tshuva, because there's a letter from everyone of the twelve tribes, and we all come from the twelve tribes. But so our root is in the same root of the twelve tribes. Right. So anyone who wants can connect. So what? That's the chesed of Hashem that He connected the twelve. It's very deep. He connected all the net letters of the twelve tribes into the sharim to so teach you that every person has a portion in these sharim and these gates of tshuva. Right. So we're all part of these gates of tshuva, intrinsic to us. And anyone who's Yerushalmi who wants can connect to your name, to the, to these to this level of of uh, of tshuva. Afu pikein lav kol adam zochel asar tshuva. Even though not everyone zochel to do tshuva, ki yeshechad she'en lo his oyes klal the tshuva, because there are people that there is no awakening at all to tshuva. Yeah, I don't know if you met these guys, but like you know, yeah, like stuck in their ways. Yeah. And even those who there is to them to wake up and do tshuva, they still not might, even if they're suddenly waking up to tshuva, right. they might not reach to that letter, that letter that's in the shah of tshuva that's connected to them. So, yeah. so apparently we have some letter that our tribe, our shoresh, is connected to in that gate of tshuva. Right. Well, yeah, tsh- teshuva, if you think about it, is, is really a schus, right? Because if we, if we go back to it, the ultimate teshuva, right, is the shuva elai ve shuva aleichem, that's a schus, right? Because the, that's, that's the teshuva of, of, of Hashem. And so if ultimately at the end of the road, that, that's, the, that's almost like the, that's the finish line, right? So every, 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 every form of teshuva has that root in it, right? In every beginning, you have an end. Right. And so, you know, I imagine that, like, you, you find that, like, right, there, there are people who they get stuck in their ways. Like, I'm... But they're not even trying to do tshuva, right. based on this. There's some people not trying to do tshuva, and then there are people that are doing tshuva and getting stuck. Right. Because they, they, they don't know this segula that we just learned about, that Tehillim is going to open up this sharim. We're going to read that in a second. Hmm. And we're going to explain it a little bit more why. Let's just, before we finish today, let's try to get to this. Uh, we've got another four minutes. Let's try to get to this point. Um, 
because it's going to help us understand this whole Torah. Those people don't. He does wake up to do tshuva, uh, but he's not zocher to get to the os, the letter that's the shah of tshuva shaychlo that's connected to him. I feel him magiel And even if he gets to there, yochel yos hashah shal tshuva sago. So say you're in that place now. You're in that os. You're in that realm, that world of understanding. You've learned the Torah. You've done the effort. But you, the gate's closed. It's not opening to you. Right. Yeah, God forbid. And from this we see not everyone is Zohar to Tshuva. Like you said, it's a merit. And here we go. Rabbi Nachman is going to help us now. And all the Siddiquim that encouraged to say to Hillem, yeah, that by saying to him, even those who know, sh- they have no Zohar to Tshuva. They're just doing it because, you know, everyone right now is saying to him because of the war or whatever. Yeah. Whom is oyrela so tshuva? He's going to wake up and want to do tshuva. Just power of tilim. Gam zocha oyde tilim la gear shal sha osa shayachlo. And through that tilim, he's going to reach that sha in the os shayachlo. That 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 level that's shayach to him. Lift toach sha and to open up the sha. Yeah. Just by saying tilim, the, the the power of tilim is going to help us. Now, where does that power come from? So I'm just going to say a little bit of chazal, and and uh, before we, I don't know if we'll go any further now. How are we gonna? How does it have that power? Who created Tehillim? Yeah, we know it's from yeah, different. Tavram, yeah. yeah, so Tehillim is a, a, a collaboration of all different times in history. Like Adam Arishan right. has got a Tehillim. My Shabbat has got eleven Psalms from Psalm Sadi ninety till ninety one, and there's the sons of Asaf, and then all different, you know, Tzedikim and times in history. Jacobinus was a Shear Malas. It's a, it's a collaboration of all the different... What David and Melech did was through Ruach HaKodesh and through his Kino and through his Tshuva and through his Avoda, he brought together all these parts of, of Psalms, all these songs. He was Mo'ira and awoke them up and uh-huh. organized it in, a, in 150 Psalms. Yeah? Yeah. So that, he was Masada this Tehillim, which all, interestingly is the Tikkun of Tehillim, of the missiles, is Tehillim. Yeah? What do you mean? But, it has the same, very similar shorish to Hillim and Tillim. The missiles is Tillim. Oh, missiles? Yeah, missiles. These missiles are hitting us. Right, what are tillim. they called? Tillim. Oh, Tillim. Yeah. What's it tough? The, yeah, same, same letters as with a Yud and a wow. H changed. I never knew that. Tillim. Yeah. So the idea that the missiles are hitting us, so we, the, with Tillim, we, we, bring, we bring them down. But the concept is that the Tehillim, I mean, Dominic and Rumi Nachman is going to talk again and again about this because remember he has a Tehillim. Clearly, he has a lot of times where he talks about Tehillim. But the, the, the point with Dominic Melech is, and remember, Rumi Nachman is a descendant from Dominic Melech, so he has in it this, that awe of Dominic Melech very much. We all have it, but he has it in the most revealed level. level. He's discussing it here that Dominic Melech had a situation, and the Gemara talks about it, where he, he was supposedly sinned with the with Batsheva. Right. He sent Uriah off. To war, or he was killed, and he was able to be with Batsheva. So that was supposed sin. It looks to us like a sin. The Gemara says it wasn't really a sin. It was only in order to teach us tshuva. Just like we said before, that Hashem comes in a way like to do tshuva with us, to help us do tshuva. He comes to do tshuva, Kiviyachu. So David and Melech on his level never really sinned. Yeah, right. He's a sadik. He had no, he's killed his Yetzirah. but he came down to our level for us to have tshuva. And how did he manifest his tshuva? So it says in the Gemara, this is Chazal, this isn't Kabbalah. This is Chazal, in the Gemara, says that he wrote Sefer Tehillim. When he wrote Sefer Tehillim, that taught Amisol for all the generations how to do tshuva. Interesting. So Hashem created a scenario that he would be able to help us do tshuva. So Tehillim helps us find that letter and break through the Shah of our letter, Shaykhlo, the letter that's connected to our essence, so that we can do tshuva. Good morning. Good morning. And that's, that's the Koyach of Tillim. You didn't have the class today, Peter? I mean... Uh, it's always upstairs, not here anymore. Hasn't upstairs? been here for years, yeah. Oh, for months, excuse me. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Anyway, so the idea of Tehillim awakens up the, the source of Tshuva. Yeah, that, that's, that's our power. Mm. And... Uh, uh, do we know how? Like, what's that even... How that even works? Like, what's the whole... So he process. says here, he says, I to him, a awaken him to do tshuva. But It will bring him to that letter that shaykhlo, lift to open up that gate. 
and we'll find that through Tehillim he would do tshuva. So obviously there's something in the Tehillim, the life right. story of David and Melech has in it, and all the different collaborations has in it such a power of tshuva he put into it that it wakens up that letter of chart. It has it, mm. it acts, gives us access to that shah that we wouldn't have otherwise. It's like a code within the Tehillim. So I've always found Tehillim to be very like very like uh a un, very unsatisfying experience for me yeah or an unmoving experience i have more ex- for me like i always found like let's say his spoke to this to be very uh a lot more connecting you know so i remember like i went to uh i was in uman it's like saying to hill and even saying like tick and clully like it was very an abs- it was like a very abstract experience like i didn't even very hard like i trying to feel like what am i even saying like uh, some of the Tehillim, you know, so you say, like, a good Tehillim, like, you know, it's like, you know, the Mizma of David, yeah. um, you know, Shem the like, so, so that's, that's a Tehillim, like, that's, that's capital, yeah. I think. I grew up saying that in the church. Right, right, yeah, yeah. Lord is, <laughs> I the, did. the Lord is my shepherd, I remember reading right? it as a kid in church, because I, I know that I went to church, but my, when in the schools I was in were very Christian, so they took us to church, I remember reading that psalm in right. English. Right, that one is that they say that one in church yeah, is like the Lord, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not lack. I grew right, up. The Lord saying, is my shepherd. I was like, wait a minute, I've said that when I the tshuva. I was like, I said that in church. Right. Oh yeah, yeah they got from us. Yeah. So the Lord is even my over there. Yeah. So, but the point is, the though, though the ones you connect with probably because you really deeply connect. The, the 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 issue is that when we're saying it, we're not we're not allowing our heart. So my wife, she's been saying to him for years and she says sometimes finishes the whole thing every week, week after week after week. And she says she goes on these journeys through to him. Yeah. It's like healing her and it brings, it's brought us to sure. I've seen, it's brought us salvations. To him is huge. And the, the Chabad Rebbe was very big every right, day yeah. to do a little bit of to him, finish it every month. It's a big, big Segula, big Kayach. And we're learning about it. We're going to learn more about it. We're going to see it's even in Sefer Shmos. It's hmm. even hinted to in Sefer Shmos, the beginning of the first passage. We're going to see how fundamental that this time of Shabbat, which is a time of Tshuva, to him is. Hmm. We're going to see it more and more. And now, hopefully, the more we learn about it, the more we'll open up our hearts to the power of Tehillim, the more we'll connect to it. We have to ask Hashem to help us connect to these things. Because if it's such a big thing, right. then we need to ask Hashem to help us connect. If we're having trouble connecting, like he's saying, it's like the gate's closed. Right. We have to ask Hashem, open my heart to this. Open my soul to, to do true tshuva and that comes together with Tehillim. And Tehillim will help me open up my heart and I want to be able to connect. I want to connect to Tehillim. I have to ask Hashem to help me connect to the Tehillim of David and Melech and to be able to connect. And this is part of the derech of, the, of Rabbi Nachman. Through tefillah, you can come to everything. The power of tefillah can bring you to every level of Yerushkai. Anything that's blocking you, you can... You can you can ask Hashem, and Hashem, like we said, Hashem, 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 that I will return to you, Hashem, Hashem, you'll return to me. You'll open up all the Gsharim, all the gates, all the obstacles. And now this is what we're learning, this to help us and come connect more to Yiddishkeit in a real way. Not make us crazy, make us more connected. So we're more connected to Hashem, so it's more real. Right. And I think that, that we can stop on that point. All right, yeah, I gotta throw my kiss. It was a good tour, no? Geschmack. So I'm sorry I didn't go according to Aleph Base Gimel, but this one just reached out to me. Oh, right. So we are holding in an important Torah, which is connected to the time we're in. And in the end, what's so important is we'll take out this, the Cheshivas of saying to Hillim. You know, the importance of saying to Hillim. Hopefully it will strengthen our to Hillim. And uh, that, that in itself makes this whole Torah worthwhile learning because one of the most important things by Siddiquim is Das. Is to, it should affect our heart level, it should affect our actions. When you open up to him after learning this whole Torah and maybe going over it a few times in your mind, in your heart, and praying on it, that you should have a different experience when you're saying to him. That's, that's the... No, we're not looking for like, you know, lights and sparkles. You know, that's not Yiddishkeit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's all these people like they want to feel something, you know, like it's a very feely, touchy generation, yeah. Mm-hmm. But that's that's not the point. The point is that it should be more meaningful, and uh, we should connect more to the words and be Paul Yeshua's. We want to have more Yeshua's. We need Yeshua's. We need 
soldiers' lives to be saved. We need more yeshiva das, more happiness, more fulfillment as a person. There's a lot. There's a lot of things to done for, and that's the real point. That Tehillim helped David Melech most importantly teach us how to do tshuva, and uh, tshuva is really where it's at. You know, this is this is especially during Shabbatim, especially on a Monday morning when most people are you know waking up with cranky Monday morning blues back to the week, uh-huh. and we're we're learning Luke tomorrow on Tinyanya Torah Ein Gimel. We already started it, and we we came across this really important pasuk from Malachi. I said he's the last of the Neviim, so when someone's the last of the Novi or the last Shofar or the last of the Anshe Knesset whatever the last person, the last Shliach for Am Yisrael is. They're the ones for all the doors. That's a cloud that's brought down from Sodom. Shuvah alai b'shuvah aleichem. Think about this pasuk. It probably would help our generation. Return to me and I'll return to you. Yeah, which is shovavim is really has it within it. Shuv, hasn't it? The, the language of shuv, shuv, shuv bottom shovavim. Hasn't it? The concept of tshuva. So this whole time period is connected to this pasuk. And this time period is only Megale in the last few hundred years. So I think the Beis Yosef was one of the first to write about it, and that was in the 1600s, so... Well, what, the, this concept that Nachman's teaching, or just in general? General like concept of Shuv, yeah, this concept of Shuv, Shuvavim. He, do, he, he does, the truth is, Rav Nachman doesn't really, I mean, I think he mentions it somewhere, but th- this is where it becomes Lamaisa, because it's all about Tshuva and Tehillim, which is, this is the time of year, and it comes out, say, for Shmos is when he, he learns this out from. You'll see later on, we're going to hope, maybe we'll get there today, we'll see. Without any pressure, we'll see if we can try to get there. Uh, it looks like it's quite far away. We'll see. We'll try. Okay, let's learn. So let's just summarize the main points of what we got yesterday. That um, So not only did we have the idea that Tinnam is Musugul It's What was the word we got in English? Propitius or something? Propitius, yeah, whatever. Yeah. It helps. It <laughs> more successful at in doing tshuva in the power of Tehillim. Um, the Memtes Sharim we learn is connected to the Memtes Osius from the Shifte Ka. Yeah. So every Os is a Shah and everyone wants to enter into those Shahs. Each person is going to try to go through their Shah, their gate to tshuva. The problem is, one, a lot of people don't even want to go there. Two, even if you want to go into the Shah, you're going to, it's going to be blocked, it's going to be closed. How are you going to open up that gate is to waken yourself with Shuvah. How are you going to waken yourself up with Shuvah through Tehillim? And through Tehillim, then you have the, the ability to go through the gate that's connected to you. Yeah, like Yushalayim is a place of Sharim, if you ever looked at it, Meir Sharim, or however you look at it, yeah. on the outside, there's gates. There's Shah Yitzion, there's Shah Yafa, there's Shah Ashba, there's all these different Sharim. So we have to open up the gates, you shalom. It's tach, you know, it's a good song from Chaim David. You remember that song? I maybe I'm too old. Open up your gates, you shall open up. Someone like that. I remember the uh, mm-hmm. other one. It's a bit of an old song. I used to sing that yeah, in university. 1998. Yeah. Open, open up the gates of heaven. There we go. That's Yeshiva. That's also good. Yeah. Now. <laughs> We're going to go to the words. We got to this page. Zeh Bechinas. And this is, <laughs> this is how you begin. Very nachem Bechinas. Shmuel. Okay. Excuse me. That time of year. Yeah, the Shmuel base. Pasuk Kaf Gimel. Nuam HaGeva. Hokab Al. I really understand how to translate that word Nuam. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. If you what is the... Uh... Nuam. I don't know what, what does it translate here? The anointed of God, of Yaakov, and sweet singer of Israel. It doesn't seem like it uh, really translates it. These are, this is the meaning of the words of the, the man, man who is established. The man who is established. Nuam. Who was Hagever. established on high. I don't know. Om Hagever. It doesn't really Hukumah. translate it. It's one of those words. The I words. Only Tanakh, I never really got it. Okay. It's an old, old word. I'm sure it has very deep meanings, but... It uh, says the word. Yeah, the words. The words. King David said he was established and high anointed, appointed by God to be the king of the Jewish people. He's also called the sweet singer. We just mentioned it before. On his having compiled songs of, of, of Shevach to Hashem. 
the books of Tehillim, which are the songs of praise sung in the temple service, Rashi Masudah Sadovid, so it's, that's a Beferish, uh two Mefarshim on Tehillim. Rav Nosson adds that the, the reasons King's words are so efficacious, wow, this is like too academic for me, yeah. is that is the key to drawing close to God is constantly praising him. Yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm not such an academic person. Articulating the words of Tehillim, therefore, enables one to repent. That's the point. Either way, just by saying Tehillim, yeah, let's say in, in our in lang Adam Pasha, yeah, simple yeah. language, which is more my style. We have to talk the gen the language of the generation, not like fifty years ago in some university, right? Um, or some English textbook. We have to we have to realize that saying Tehillim, Zogin Tehillim, as I say in Yiddish, that that Daf Zogin Tehillim, the Tehillim Zoga. We have to say Tehillim that will bring us to Tshuva. Says Vaita Rabbi Nachman, Doshenu Dosh of Rabbi Sainu Zachon Labrocha, a holy Chazal say Shahakim Allah Shal Tshuva. Yeah, that the idea of establishing of establishment of Tshuva is a Gemara among Cotton Tet Zion Ahmed Base, which the whole Sefer is a lot to do with. That whole part of Chashas is a lot to do with mourning. Uh, the Hilach is a mourning. As well as as Cholamoyed, that's the Moed Cotton. He established Ula, the benefit of repentance, says the translation. I don't know why I keep reading these translations, I'm not really getting much out of it. Venuim Zmiris Noam Zmiris Yisrael. This is a famous, you know, concept that yeah, David Melech is a sweet singer of Yisrael. Right. The main point is that we get out from the sweet singer of Yisrael that he established to him. That's what we care about. Like, you know, Kala Kavod, you know, Avon Free, the great singer and all that, the hub deal. But the main point for our clients, well, is we came out with a safer term. That's, so that's what we call him the Natam Zemir Yisrael? He was a sweet singer of Yisrael. To, to teach us safer term was established by him. Are he there? Who come Allah at Shal Tshuva? Oh, the Lashon of Noim Zemir Yisrael, sweet singer of Yisrael. Yeah. Um, well, pleasant it's also could be pleasant singing right. over Israel. You translate a few different words. Um, the main point is that it was Tehillim was connected to Dabin Melech. Dabin Melech was there to teach us to do tshuva. But, but he has the spark within him of Mashiach. He's the one who's carrying it. And Mashiach is going to oh. help ultimately bring us all to, to tshuva shlema. All of us. Not just tshuva, but tshuva shlema. Complete, right. tshuva, complete tshuva, complete fixing of everything. Yeah, the world talks about Tikkun Olam. They want to get to Tikkun Olam, stop talking about, you know, fixing up the trees or something. Right. We have to fix up ourselves. The, we're the microcosm right. of the whole world. You want a good world, we have to become close. Okay, fix up the ocean. Yeah, we have to fix up our hearts. That's what's going to bring... the if People won't ruin the environment if they're Sadiqim. Yeah? Right. It's all these with Shoyim ruining the environment. All these people that couldn't care less about anybody except themselves. Right. Or the people that are so worried about the environment aren't worried about anything else. Yeah, I mean, like that Greta, Machshima, she's screaming pro, pro Palestinian, pro Hamas. She's like, well, you're pro rape and murder, but not pro like some using a car, getting from A to B, like right. using petrol, like, you know, Chonon Nefesh. Anyway, Shem Shemena, these kind of Chonon Nefesh people. Says in the Chonon Brocha, says in Vodazora, Daf. Dalid Amid Base, Lo Hai David Roy La Osa Masa. David not suited for his deeds. How is to teach individuals Ala Kadela Hoida Hoiris to Shuva La Yochid Vukhil? So this is really important that teaching Shuva to every individual Vukhil is really where it's at. Like that's that's what we're doing together. Like we, we both need to do tshuva, I'm sure. And everyone, whoever any time, like any, I got went to Bene Kiva yesterday to teach a class. Around twenty boys came on. First of January, really impressive, yeah. Turn out. One of the reasons was because they weren't allowed to go out that night. Um, oh. But secondly, it's credit to these guys that they they uh, managed to get up at ten in the morning and be there in the, in the base of midrash and ready to learn. And mm -hmm. it was a schuss for them and schuss for me that I had somebody to teach. And the whole point is to teach us to do tshuva. So I can't come and start quoting maybe Nachman to these guys. It'd be like too much for them. It'd be like, oh, this guy's burning us, yeah? Right. I remember once I, I, when I first started teaching in a place called Shari Yishalayim, and I started with Mr. Light Sharim, like Musa Swarim, yeah? Right. And the guys all started having stomach aches. Yeah. And I was sitting there teaching it because it was like, oh, Rabbi, you're like killing me. You know, like they all, they all they literally got, it's like manifesting physically in front of me. And they all had to run away, yeah? Huh. And I was like, well, I'm not so good at this. 
Because if you burn them, they're just going to run away. You have to bring it into words that they will help that individual to tshuva. That's the problem that we're saying right. here. That is the power of Tehillim and the power of Dovla Melech is he was talking to the individual. He wasn't talking only to the cloud. That's that's a tremendous kayak because to be able to help the each prat, each part of individual Klaisro find their path of tshuva, that is like that's Mashiach. That, that now we understand. I mean he has such a kayak through Tehillim, through writing something down, so, songs, he can more over tshuva and Klaisro for all the generations. That's such a power. Think about it. Like you know, like the, it means that you literally are the ultimate cure of Rabbi because you you're implanting these psalms, these these words, these sweet songs into Klaisro and you're helping right. them come back to Hashem. It's a tremendous thing. You have to think about that a little bit. Like um, we all need to be doing this nowadays. Like I know they say the Tshuva movement is like what it was, but like we said, Kirov Krovim, we have to all, all come close to Hashem. Nimsa we find that the main teachings of tshuva is through Dovid and Menach. Oh, okay. Okay. So he's the he's the he's the he's the about tshuva. I mean, it's not he's not really about tshuva. That would be a mistake. Reuven's about tshuva. The, the from Shevet Reuven. He he's about tshuva. He's the famous about tshuva. First about tshuva. Dovid and Menach. I wouldn't call him about tshuva. I call he was a sadik who was teaching us how to do tshuva. What does horaas mean? Teach. Ah, the Ikah Hora, yeah. okay, that's Shuvah. Yeah, Hora, like Torah and Hora, it's a connected teachings. Yeah, there, there's a similar Shorish there. Um, but the Ode the, David, Ikah Shuvah Shal Dovin Amalek, who's Sefer Tilim. The main Shuvah of Dovin Amalek is Sefer Tilim. Still hasn't worked how, explained yet how that works. Well, that's the part I never understood is... Is it like just stam? You just say the hillim. You don't know what you're saying. You don't have the kavanas, and it just has a, a uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Where it has a, a rosham on you. Yeah, very good. That's a good good way of explaining it. It has a rosham, like people who zog the zara kodesh. They say the zara svanim have a Indian, and I used to do it also. Not that I'm such a sadic, but I used to learn a lot of zara kodesh. And a lot of time I didn't know what was going on. I did know, I didn't know. And thank God Daniel, Daniel first translated it and made it more accessible. Um, but yeah, nevertheless, yeah. you go through the Zohar and it has a Roshim on you, it has a Koyach to bring, to bring right. Kedusha to you. Now, a lot of Litvaks, like Yeshiva Shah people, will be like, if you're not learning it properly and you're not be, you know, there's no Havana, then you're wasting your time. That's, that's the certain like Shita, yeah? There's different Shitas about Klai Israel. Well, and a Sfadi Shita Samuna would be, no, it has a Koyach. Right. You know, they say, sure, sure, maybe have Shabbos. By this point, they probably know what they're saying, because they've been saying it the whole life, have Shabbos, the ones who do it. So those guys, they, they're really saying, sure, sure, I mean, it's the most beautiful love song in history, yeah? La Havdil, yeah? It's, it's the most beautiful connection point. And the point is, the more you connect to it, the more you say it, the more you awaken it. Obviously, you know, we're, we're 2023, 20, 24 in the Shabbos, yeah, we're now 2024, 20, can you believe it? 5784. Are we are intellectually in a different place than our previous generations ever were. We've been exposed to wisdom and knowledge that no other generation other than maybe like, you know, the Dora Day and the Midbar had. We have access to all kinds of wisdom. And so therefore we do need to make sure that our minds are stimulated. We can't pretend what we're not. Yeah, there are people who don't care. Like I was just listening to an interview like David Goggins. I know Lahav Dil were talking about David Melech and they were talking about David Goggins, not really connected, but he's, okay. he, he's a proper like nutcase like in his lifestyle. Like I don't know if he really is. He's, he's, he doesn't like it that people think he's crazy. He just, what he, what he does is he just, he's like an example of someone in the motivational space who is the most like Swadi you can imagine, like most simple minded in his approach. It's all about fighting the demon inside and nothing else. How I do it, why I do it, I just know this works. Yeah? No like Kochmas in his avoda, like of of running and exercise and right. becoming a Navy SEAL and he doesn't care about the mechanism. So he was on a podcast yesterday of of um, this guy called Huber, Dr. Huber, whatever his name is. Everyone's very into him these days. Oh Huberman. Huberman, sorry. I don't know why I got his name wrong. Dr. Huberman. So he's very popular. Thank you for correcting me. Huberman is I mean I have so many people I know always talking about him nowadays. I was very, I'm very impressed with his way of doing, you know, being a, a doctor and teaching it. He's very, like, you know, 
humble and connectable. Like he is universal in, in his way of saying over stuff. And he was talking to David Goggins. It's interesting watching someone who's so knowledgeable talking to someone who doesn't want to be knowledgeable, just wants to do, yeah? And, and at the same time, he is trying to be knowledgeable. This David Goggins is trying to educate himself, but it's always without this sort of needing to rationalize it and understand it. It's, it's a very like simple approach to everything. And, you know, I, in a way we can all learn from it on a certain level because we all have that, those demons inside of us. And yeah. at the same time, what Dr. Humburn explained to him, which he didn't know, is that you actually have parts of your brain that grow the more you do things out of your comfort zone, the more you do things you don't want to do. That's a tremendous power. Yeah, that just happens to be a conversation I listened to yesterday. Why am I connecting it here? Because David, David and Melech, one of the things, if you look at Psalms, he's constantly facing difficulties and things you, that most of Clyosol would want to just stay away from. Yeah, like right. He's facing his son who's rebelled against him. He's facing his colleagues who have rebelled against him. He's constantly dealing with opposition by the non-Jewish world. You know, for me, one of the most important Psalms I ever came across on a personal level, it's Lamed David. It's, it's Psalm Tehillim Lamed David. Yeah, 34. Which one's that? We say it Shabbos Day. Yeah. We say it every Shabbos Day. It goes through the Aleph base. Yeah, the fam there's some famous Pesukim over there. Mir ah, Chofetz okay. Chaim. Yeah, it's Tov. Yeah, no, it's a Lash You know, that whole one. Yeah. So yeah. It begins with the Aleph base. So it's, where's it based? From what I remember, when I, when I learned it, it's based, but David Melech was by the non-Jewish king over there. And he pretended to be crazy and uh, that saved him. Yeah. So I was reading this in a in a reform sitter that I had when I was on on the beach in university. I mistakenly tried to keep Shabbos. I mean, I, that was a good part, but I was mistakenly carrying the book on Shabbos and brought it down to the beach. I didn't know about Arab and things like that. And I didn't really know much about anything. So I was reading this reform sitter Psalms trying to pray. And I and this guy came out of nowhere. He was like an Elianovi kind of guy came out of nowhere and started speaking to me on this beach and, and as the sun was setting. And he said to me, interesting, everything he talked about, whether he meant it or not, whether he was Elianovi or not, I don't know. But Elianovi spoke through him because everything he spoke about is what I needed to hear at that time to give me the strength to make that decision to come to Israel. Like he literally answered up through talking about his life, which has nothing to do with my life, but it just somehow answered up all my issues about being, having the strength and the courage to travel, to leave my home and all the stuff I needed to, to, to sort of think about and do. And then I said to him, look, I'm trying to read these Psalms and I don't know anything from anything. He said to me, within six months, you'll be able to read Hebrew and you'll understand it all. And I did, I, you know, not completely, but I was already in Yeshiva by six months later and I was learning already. Oh. And like, it was a certain moment, like, well, my life changed, and it was that Tehillim I was looking at, Tehillim Lamed Dalad, and with the Aleph bass and David and Melech going crazy. And it was like, it showed me that all the obstacles that David and Melech went through were opening up my journey at that time as well. Like it was his Psalms, his journey of tshuva and, and elevating everything that he had to deal with for, to Hashem, that was helping me do tshuva. And I, I, it was literally that moment, that, that, was, that was the point that my life changed. And I, I always... When I get to that to hit him, I always remind myself, you know, like I was sitting on a beach, clueless, didn't know about Shabbos, long hair, didn't know about you going to Shiva. My whole life could have been a different path. And it's just a matter of just getting that light of tshuva come to you and to believe that you can do this. So David and Melech gives us that chizuk. He was, imagine, he's by himself with this king who wants to kill him, yeah? The enemy. He's with the Plishtim king. They're, they're the worst enemies. And he somehow gets him, keeps himself alive over there by pretending to be crazy. Yeah, like we can't understand, and this is just one of many, many stories to go through his life. Right, it's not an easy life. So he, David and Melech, in Sefer Tehillim, and that's why I brought up this David Goggins. Cause like he's teaching the world that it doesn't have to be easy. It's not about easy. It's not about comfort. It's about finding the the voices within. That's and we all need to do that. And that David and Melech gives us the tools. That's imagine if this guy would. I mean, I think he does believe in God, but imagine if like uh, the world would have more connection to this light of tshuva that would help them with all these struggles that they're dealing with and i miss our need to be that representative not you know fressing and living it up you know avoiding things you know having a nice program and forgetting about what they're here for we, we can't do that well, that's not our job to just party and enjoy i said to the guys you want to party first accomplish something then you can party i said to the guys let's go through the next eight weeks a show with him get something accomplished and then we've got purim to celebrate 
let's get this war sorted out and we can celebrate the victory of destroying Hamas. Let's accomplish something first before we party. Uh-huh. Not just party for the sake of party. And we say and we wake up in a great way this Ruach HaKodesh. Ad so this, you, you, ask, you asked a very good question. How are you going to find it in Tehillim? Yeah? How are you going to find this teaching? How are you going to find this concept? That the main tshuva of Dovna Melech is Sefer Tehillim. How are you going to find that? He says you have to wake yourself up in a great way. That's what he did. He woke, Dovna Melech woke himself up in a huge way, awakened, you know, whatever that means, like uh, aroused, rather. Aroused in a great way, very much, in Ruach HaKodesh. So that's a high level, you know, most of us are not at Ruach HaKodesh, so we have to be my men that this was written with Ruach HaKodesh, it was written with Divine Spirit. Yeah. Until every one of us, according to, um, you know, where we're holding, yeah, will find himself, the Zachas Tshuva Aydei Amir Tehillim. And he'll find himself in the Tilim and he'll be able to then come merit to do tshuva right. by saying to him. So, so when we say in the Tehillim, we're saying like when we're reading, I don't know, so, some of the the the, the kapitlach are, are easier, I guess, to find yourself within it. Some of them, you have to find your own little journey within it or you find yourself just like more of a pasha, it's like just reading it. What do you think he's saying? Like meaning, are we are we imagining ourselves to be hiding in a cave from Shoal and whatever else it is, or are we just uh, imagining how this pertains to our lives? It's a little bit of everything. I, I would. My, my wife has one way, and I think she's correct. That she goes on a journey through Tillam, and it's it's like this back and forth, right? Somewhat more like what you're saying that you're experiencing the actual explanations, the simple meaning of the words, and the journey David Melech went on, and then you're going into your own journey. And you've got to allow yourself to let go and sort of go on this journey. And when you go on a journey, you like go somewhere, you can't be like what you were from the destination you left. You're now in a different headspace. You're going on a journey, you're experiencing things different, you're seeing views you don't used to, you're seeing people you're not used right. to seeing. You're experiencing a journey. But at the same time, you're grounding it in the words of Psalms, like in right. the words of Dovna Melech, who's so guiding saying, that journey. Rav Nachum, when he talks about saying to Hillam, he's not talking about... Um, you know, even though I'm sure it does help, the, you know, one to two or three Kapitla uh, Chaptehillim, they say after diving that they zip through. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that, that's what Shlomo, Shlomo Katz was saying, we're not doing it enough with enough panemius. He was like, he's sort of fed up with it. In a, in a, he didn't say those oh, words. Yeah? He didn't say fed up. I mean, that's me throwing it. I never liked The that. energy he gave over about it, according to my wife, was like, you know, like I want us, everyone is said with more inner feeling, less of this just doing it. Yossi right. sign, you know. Let's say these words, we feel good, we did something for the soldiers. That kind of like ticking a box, yeah. And that's ticking box business is not really going to do much. It's, I mean, it does something, it's better than you know, going ticking a box. I just you know, went to a casino today and and did this and that and all these various. Like, it's better than ticking the wrong boxes, so it's just ticking the right boxes, but it's still not what Kleiser are about. We're much better than that. We've, we've got right. a heart. We've got a soul. We're, we're deep. These these tehillim are written by Dovna Melech. He was screaming, "Memakim!" from the depths of his soul. It wasn't right. when he wrote Shemaz, "Memakim." It's from the depths. That means the deepest place. Right. That's why it's usually like a tehillim would say on like the highest times, like Rosh Hashanah, the ten days of Tshuva. You know, right. just zogging it out. Like personally, what I I just say, it. I just try to get it done because I, the least time I'm with it, in my opinion, the better because it's it become like that. It's become like rote. So I'd rather not be busy. I don't like the slow back and forth. I don't like it. Oh, the, the like Personally, stanzas. I, I mean, I do it because the seaboard doing it. But I just, right. I honestly, I, I'll tell you what I do. I just fly through it. They start it. I already finished already. And then I just go on to something else. I'm busy learning something. I'll do something more meaningful. Even though everyone else is saying it bit by bit. And you meant to do what the seaboard did. All right, I said it. I just don't say it like them because it's so slow and meaningless for me to just stand there. I would say, well, force myself to have meaning. I can't right. do that every day. I just not going to happen. Uh, like I think uh, it doesn't work. That doesn't work. Maybe we me. should uh, suggest Rabbi Shlomo. I feel like I have a better, a better instead of, instead of saying Tehillim every day at the yeah. end of davening, we should all do what the Hashkama minion does: is make a rakiza. Yeah, that's good. And then we dance, and then afterwards we could say Mishaberach. Maybe then, we, if we said a Tehillim, then we'd have right. more energy. Right. Or even just dance. Then you know, I think I think, Nachman should, I think is very into that. I, think, I mean, I mean, it might be a bit like strange for some of the people there, but you know, you have to be real with the people you're with. 
but maybe you're right. I mean, we have to sometimes action, doing something different, yeah. dancing around, doing like, I remember I, I used to dive in this Nate's Minion opposite the Holy of Holies, Kodesh Kodesh, I don't know if you've been there. Yeah, so underneath yeah, the Kotel. Kotel, yeah. So there's a Nate's Minion there. You have to wait a certain time in the morning. They open up the door and then they close it. And that's it. There's no getting in there. Yeah. It's a very specific time. So I used to go there, Shabbos, with one of my friends, Melech David. His name is Melech David. Imagine, like Amazing. David Melech, Melech David. He's a Gare? Yeah. No, no, <laughs> he's from Kansas, Texas. He's like a big mosh beer in, in Manchester. Like he's a therapist and he's a hosh of guy. Manchester. Yeah. yeah. He's from Kansas, Texas originally. Yeah. Someone told me that. I don't know if this is true, but someone yeah. told me. Because I've been in Manchester a yeah. couple of times. My cousins yeah. live there. Sure. Yeah, it's like it's the most depressing. Yeah, place so in the world. dreary. So his job is very busy. Yeah. Being a therapist. Like he's like the head of the therapist over there for a month. Someone told he's me that. He's a busy, busy guy. That the Lubavitcher Rebbe one time yeah. said that even that Mashiach will even come to Manchester. Yeah, and that's Melech <laughs> David. That's my, he, my, for me, he's my little little Mashiach, that guy. Anyway, he's big into Spodidus and even in Manchester and goes to Uman every year. It's he's, a tough uh, avoza. To yeah, and there. he has full respect from the Rabbonim. That's that's the biggest Kiddush. Like, for him to be his own unique person and do his own unique thing, that's... That I, I'm very good at that also, but what he's managed, he's getting, he gets full respect from the rabbinic. I did like him. The establishment accepted him, and that's unusual. That means he's able to much bear on the establishment, which is like mm -hmm. thing. But anyway, his so we used to go there together in Davin, um, uh, opposite the Kodesh Kadoshim over there, and they they do a funky dance, like the way he'd say it. They like do like a funny dance. So I once talked it out with him. What's pshat? So he said it's based on a Kabbalah thing that just before Musaf, I'm about to say the highest point of the davening of Shabbos, of Kesa, we're about to say Kesa. So before we say Kesa, before we go into Musaf, you have to do something funky, move around, do some funny dance. And you see all these old guys doing this funny dance. Nice. And it stimulates what the mochin, it gets the mind going in this funky dance. They, right. It really is a goofy dance. It's like it's not like they dance like like very seriously around in a circle. They do like silly movements and stuff, yeah? Company and, flaps. Yeah, and it gets everyone in the right mood. And then all these guys, these mukubalim, start davening Musaf, and it's like a high, high feeling. Right. You're in the holiest place, you just davenates, you know, like, you know, it's it's a high davening. It's it's right. supposed to be in such a minion. I remember many times going there on Shabbos morning, as a living when I used to live in Yishlaim and be a bocha there and stuff. And I had more time in my hands. Right. But anyway, but Jemaya is very into that. Yeah, sure. He does all these weird dances and weird yeah. stuff. He, he yeah. sits in his seat. Have you ever seen how he sits? Yeah, yeah. He sits back. He sits like I remember seeing him. See, you, everyone heard about him like the last five, ten years. Yeah, I was going there like. 15 20 years ago and right. he was sitting he had like five ten people around him oh, wow. and i used to go speak to him and he'd sit there with like an orange juice and his mustache over the cup and yeah you know like like talks very like you know he's very yeah, like mumbled yeah and uh, but he's holy holy upon him i used to just go in there just look at him honestly yeah he's got such a holy face so still when i go back to Shlam, i always try to go in there and just have a look at his upon him for a minute my wife knew even though he's surrounded by 20 30 50 people now 100 people it's massive the amount of people around him but right. and the shawl's like five times the size when I remember. He was like in a tiny room when I first came across him. All mm. these good dollars. I had this first to see Rabbi Hillman before he became famous. Right. Um, we used to come stay next to my house. I used to see him walking around the street. My daughter was talking about it. We used to see all these Sadiqim like before they would become like a massive and big followings. Right. And you could just go up to them and talk to them. Um, I've seen my Zibelberg, all these Sadiqim before they had like their small notoriety, whatever the word is, notoriety, uh, fame. They, they, uh, not that they're looking for it, but it, it sort of they've built up a big following. Right. And uh, back then they were they were not like that, and it was easy to access them, and uh, you could talk to them. So I had that time period before they all became known. I could go and talk to Dre the Makot, ask some things. Right. And uh, thank Hashem, I had that time period. I got to my kids grew up seeing them. I used to always bring all my little kids into the shul so they'd see a sadik, you know. Wow. And I, I'd, I'd just like be by one side where I've seen Maya, and then I'd go. In between Damani, I pop into the color of Rebbe to watch his Lakhar Dodi. And I go back to Rav Simai because it's such long Damani. And then after Rav Simai, on the way home, I see the Shustina Rebbe coming back from the Kotel, being carried, literally, physically carried, from the Kotel all the way to back to his oh. home because he was so, like, high. He needed to literally be carried down the street. And then I'd get to, on the way, they'd see Rebbe Morgenstern, um, was still hadn't even daven yet, and we'd already, like, it was way after Rebbe Right. And he was in such a high, like, his manim was so high, and I'd see him, and then I'd go finally go home. And uh, at one point, I started dubbing by my Rebbe now. The Tom the Rebbe used to dub much quicker. 
and I'd be able to, after him, go to all those rabbis. After the davening right. by him, even Rav Simai, I'd be able to go everywhere. So, I, you know, I met those good days in Yushalayim. I even used to dump my Bob of in Yushalayim. There was a nice Bob of a minion next to yeah. the Sands of Mikvah and uh, by um, Divrei Re- De Chaim over there. And um, so, um, whatever the name is, San, uh, what's the name? San Hedria? Not San Hedria. Um, Got the name of the road there, but uh, uh, oh. anyway, the kids uh, I used to there was a nice uh, Bob of a minion. I learned uh-huh. at a Bob of a Kolo for a while because they were that's a nice part about uh, yeah, Yushalayim is you have all that, all the or you all the R. And but I was there before it was like more popularized, so it didn't have that feeling of like it just like following what the next trend is, who's the next right. rabbi, the you know, that's in like it was, it wasn't like that, it was, it was finding the city, finding out who are the Siddiquim of this time. And going and being around them and Be'emes and listening to their Torah and and giving time to it in a real way in a in a in a consistent way that you could bekabel something, and uh, you know it wasn't so you could take a selfie. You know? There was no such thing, you know. Um, anyway, Ikachuva shall David a Malach who say for Tilim. Right. So it's God of Ma'od Ruach Akolish Ad Shal Kol Echad Echad Kfi Mashu Yochel Amot Says Asma B'Toch Sefer Tilim. The whole point is to find yourself within the Sefer Tilim. So that's what I'd say. My wife, she goes on these journeys every week. We have to figure it out ourselves with our personality, how to awaken ourselves. We might not be a real Kodesh, but we can awaken ourselves to say Tilim and Mokavana, though in a way that works for ourselves. I personally do what they're doing now in the shul. I try to do every day um, and finish it every month. Say three or four or five Tilim a day and finish it every month. Like the way the, the Chabadniks have, uh, and according to the... Um, the Chodesh, the, the Seder of the Chodesh. Right. And then I finished him every Chodesh. I say a special tefillah at the end of the month and start again. And that's what I've been doing for like, I don't know, 25 years or something. And then you get start to get regal with the tefillah. You start to get it. Every so when you have a good moment, it opens up to you. I'm all about good moments. I'm not about it always being a good moment. I'm about finding that good moment. And once in a while, those moments, suddenly you're saying a tefillah and you're like, wow, this is talking to me now. And you, you're suddenly connecting in. And then all those hours and hours before and after were just to get to that good moment. Right. That's a, like me, a more realistic p- approach than expecting I'm going to go off into this like, you know, mystical trance. That's probably not going to happen. Yeah. So it's like about being real with with who we are. And uh, yeah, David and Malach was in a level of Ruach HaKodesh. So he was anointed. He had the power to open up these gates for us. And these gates of tshuva were, were he, remember, David, uh, Rabbi Nassim was a student of Rabbi Nachman, who was a descendant of David Melech. And one of the things Rabbi Nassim did was to write a book called The 50th Gate. I don't know if you've ever seen it in English. But um, it's the concept is Lakuti Halachas, basically, or the Lakuti Tefilis, rather. It's, a, it's, a, it's a, the, the Lakuti Halachas turned into Lakuti Tefilis, turned into prayers. It's right. maybe at some point we can get to the other Swam Rabbi Nachman if we don't get stuck with Tanya at some point. But the point is that over there, by the Kuti Tefilas, you see how he turns Torah into Tefila. And right. that really is a demonstration of what Tehillim really is. Tehillim is Torah and Tefila together in one. Interesting. So Rabbi Nachman and Rabbi Nassim are tremendous examples of people who, who, dem- who lived what Tehillim is about, bringing Torah and Tefila together. And that's why Lakuti Alachis is Lakuti Tefilas. The Torah has become Tefilas, become prayers, literally. They're written down and uh, you can pray them. And they're very special. And it might also help opening up your heart to Hashem. And uh, in English it's called the 50th gate, I think, or something like that. I don't know, I never really used it so much. Maybe I should. Ika has dakachas shnaim asa ka. And the main refinement, yeah, we're trying to purify ourselves. Yeah, The main refinement is the, of the 12 tribes of God, Shem Memtes Osius. This is these 49 letters. Shem Bechinus Memtes Shai Tshuva. This is the 49th gate of Tshuva, gates of Tshuva, high of Mitzrayim. And that was what where we were in Mitzrayim, which is where we are now in the Pasha. Tshu Bechinus Misad Hagorin. And this is in the aspect of, um, according, uh, sorry, Meitza Hagorin. The Meitza Hagorin, the, the restriction in the throat. Yeah, Meitza is Lashem Mitzrayim. Mitzrayim is a restriction. There's a restriction. You ever got a sore throat? You feel like it's narrowing, getting more and more narrow. It's hard to eat, hard to speak. Yeah, no, Elena, we don't want it, but it's very painful. And Mitzar Goyen, the, the narrowing of the throat is the aspect of Mitzrayim. Shubachinus right. Ila. So, and this is the high level tshuva. 
yeah, which is the aspect that Arizal talks about that. Tshuva is a high level tshuva, and he says, V'kis v'arizal, ayin sham, v'havin So you have to really be on a level now to understand a little bit what it talks about in the kis v'ari, which is a very high, you know, writings of Kabbalah. Right. But the point is, for our level, Hasidus is about bringing Kabbalah into our life. Right. The memtes osius of the memtes shari tshuva, of the shifte ka, that there's a certain, uh, that we were in Mitzrayim when this uh, all came out, this power of tshuva, and in the place of the throat. Remember, what was para? Para is also connected to the back of the neck. Right. It's called uh, orpa. The back of the neck, same osis is para. Yeah. Peira, bad mouth. One of the tikkunim mashavim is to fix the mouth. Hmm. Yeah. Peira, bad mouth. How do you fix it? With tilim. Yeah. With prayers, with feelers, with Torah. Yeah, Shavim is a time to fix up the peira, the bad mouth, the, the restricted consciousness, restricted way of being, to expand it through tefillah, through Torah. Shibuhin is tshuva this is aspect of tshuva ilah. Alkein achash and izdachu sham in Mitzrayim, zachul iseis misham. Once we've been purified there in Mitzrayim, the, the, the 49 letters of the shifte ka, through the, uh, this, these 49 levels of shari tshuva, Fixing up the forty-nine levels of Tuma. He doesn't say that here, but that's what, what was going on in Mitzrayim. Zochel asates misham. Then you can go out from that. Sapu mem you may svira. And that's how do we bring that alive during that time of, with Pesach? Right. We bring it alive through the mem you may svira through the counting of the forty-nine days of svira. Right. Connect the mem shai tshuva. That's also connected the the mem shai tshuva, which is funny because in Shlomo's class, you were there right. yesterday. He's talking about svira saomer yeah. in the middle of. Uh, in the middle of Tavis, a Monday in Tavis, Sunday right. in Ta- Monday in Tavis, Tuesday in Tavis. We're, we're now Tuesday, but yesterday Monday. Funny enough, I thought it was Monday. I don't know why. Tuesday in Tavis, we're we're learning about it, and Monday in Tavis it was Sfirah Saoma, yeah. And the Sfirah of Chodesh Iyar was a big time where the Medina and everything. That's what Shlom is talking about. Yeah. So there's a certain tick and amidus that needs to be done, but Dafka in that time, yeah. and that's connected to the Shari Tshuva. Shem Mechinus Memtes Osis now, Viyom Echamishim, to get to that 50th day, which is in the seven, Chadish Sif, the destination. As a Yored Hashem Al Ha Sinai. And then Hashem can come down onto Ha Sinai once we've done those 49 gates. We can't get to Ha Sinai without the 49 gates of Tshuva. There has to be a process of counting, of Tshuva, of Tikhamidus, of building ourselves so we can then get to that. Right. High level of Kabbalah Satoira that Hashem came down onto our Sinai. Shmos. Shuvalechem. Then Hashem's returning to us. But what did we have to do first? Sure. We had to chuva a lie. We had to come back to him. We turned to him, so he returns to us. And that's right. our Sinai. What was the chuva of us leaving Mitzrayim and the 49 days of Surah? Uh-huh. Once we've done that avoda, then Hashem chuvalechem. And then I'll return to you. I'll return to you. I'll return to you. Chinus tshuva shal Hashem yisbarach ba'atzma. Give you alchav. Chinus shal chamishim. So now we understand really what Sviras Om is all about, and these forty-nine gates of the osius of the shift they can. We start to understand this whole process of going out of restriction of the mates arim, yeah, and coming to this place of godless, of of godless demochin, of expanding consciousness of kabbalas Torah. We understand that it's a it's that pasuk again of a tshuva alive. We 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 return to Hashem. Through this whole process, and then Hashem Shuv Aleichem comes to us, and that's Kabbalah Sator, That's the fiftieth day. That's that's the point. Now, how how do we see this? And this all begins when Ve'ela Shmois Bnei Yisrael Boim Hamitzrayim It's Yaakov Ish Beiso. Amazing. Right. So we've got enough time now to learn this famous concept. This all comes out in Shmois. This Pasha. All right. We just read it yesterday in Shul. We read it Shabbos afternoon. Ze'ela. Shmos, these names B'nai Yisrael, that came to, from, to, to Mitzrayim, yeah, who came to Egypt with Yaakov, each man, each, each man with his house. What's it? Sophie Tavis, Haim Osius. Look at this gilui from Rabbi Nachman. Yeah, Tehillim, but Osius Tshuva. You ever thought about that? You read it, uh, you wouldn't think about it. It's yeah, <laughs> yeah. i never thought about it. Now, the Shmos, maybe you'd say the names of B'nai Yisrael, the Shvotim, the, you know, there's a spirituality to the names. It's not just whatever. Right. But then now we're saying not just that, the softavis of those words, it teaches us Tehillim Shehel. and Tshuva. So we begin a new Sefer Shmos, this whole time period of Shavavim, with two powerful 
concepts, Tehillim and two powerful realities of Tshuva, of of Avodah Hashem. Tehillim and Tshuva. Just checking it out. Tough, hey, Yud, yeah. Lamid, Mem. That's Tehillim. Hey, tough, base, Shin, Vav, Tshuva. The Juk. Tehillim wow. and Tshuva. No extra words, no kolel, no gematches. Yeah. It just is those letters. Yeah. Tehillim and Tshuva. The last letters of all these. Yeah, in order. Um, the the second. Uh, it's a little bit out of order. The oh, hey look. comes. The hey is. No, I'm saying in order, meaning first it says to Hillam, then it says to Shuvah. Oh, yeah. That's the, the, you're right. That, the, in that order, yeah. First is Chuva, which brings us to. Uh, sorry, to Hillam, which yeah. brings us to Chuva. Very good. He just said what Jesus said. Yeah, that it's in order. To yeah. brings us then to Chuva. And this is the aspect of the, of the Shmos, yeah? the names of the sons of Israel who came to Mitzrayim. He memtes shari tshuva. Heim bechinis memtes osis sheish shemus bnei Yisrael. Bedafka, yeah, bedaika. That is the names of bnei Yisrael that went down to Mitzrayim. The names, these sharem, these these forty nine gates, yeah. Because remember, now we're saying the osis of Klai Yisrael of all the shvatim is these memtes sharem. Right. So these memtes, these forty nine gates are the names that went down to bnei Yisrael to to lezakik sham to purify, to be purified there, to be right. refined there. Once they were refined, then what? Canal, then we can receive the Torah on the 50th, which is the, the, the Tachlis. The point of the, of the Shibud was to purify us, refine us, so we right. could then receive the Torah and go through all these gates of, of, of Tshuva and get to that 50th gate of Tshuva. Right. Nun Shari Bina, Nun Shari Tshuva. And that's what we have now. We wake up every day in this world. Not like in Mitzrayim where they woke up and they didn't know what was going to be. They didn't have the Torah like we have. They cannot open up. They had teachings. Had the Shevet Levi. They had. There was from Avraham Yitzchakov. There was teachings. There were. There was leaders then, but they were in a state of shibud. And except for Shevet Levi, they weren't really getting much time to learn anything, and do anything. We wake up in the morning. We we make a stroll down to Shevet David. We learn. We have the Nun Shari Tshuva in our hands in our base right. midrashim. We have the Nun Shari Bina. It's accessible. We're learning it now. Yeah, literally. And it's interesting because the whole concept of Tehillim helps us to find those individual gates. So we have also the ability to, to awaken the truth of Klai the Bnei Yisrael, that we're Memtesh Shari Tshuva. We're connected intrinsically in our names to the, this place of Tshuva, repentance, and to the ultimate level of 50 of when Hashem returns to us. Because we said Hashem's Kibiyoko doing Tshuva. That part we don't understand, that 50th level. Right. That's beyond Klai Yisrael. That's Hashem's tshuva. Right. Returning to what is his tshuva to return to us? Right. That's none. It's interesting. His tshuva is to return to us. I think that's the way you'd understand it. If you want to understand what it means, Hashem doing tshuva, Kibiyachu, it's oh. Hashem returning to Bnei Israel, giving us the Torah, becoming one with us. Zesh and, uh, and like, which is to kind of add to that is it sounds like Hashem is like waiting. At the door, to burst in to do that, but we, he's waiting for us to get to that memtes, so that he can just kind of just do that nun, right? So it's almost like it's a daily thing, right? You know the Balatanya says every day is see us at Kabbalah Satara. How do you see that? Uh -huh. you wake up in the morning. What kind of state are you in? Constricted uh -huh. consciousness. Yeah? yeah. I was thinking about my son in. Kanyunis, you know, that's the first thing I woke up thinking about him. Right. It's like, wow, this is heavy. Another day, my son in such a place. Yesterday, there were there was whole story with his his general unit, San Kanim, and there were people who, who were in a serious situation. Um, thank God it wasn't him, but still, not you know, it might be thank God not him, but you know, it's close. And Shem Shemayim, and if it was friends of his. You know, it's All scary right. what's going on over there. How, how do you know? You follow? Yeah, we get updates and they tell us, don't worry, it wasn't, you know, who, who specifically, yeah, who not. We're in a, f a parent group and of his oh, unit. Oh, yeah? And yeah. I the army that. have to keep us updated. They have to. The parents were responsible on some level. Oh, so, so they have some sort of like WhatsApp group? Yeah, we have a WhatsApp group for the army. With the, That's with amazing. The yeah. And just let you know, hey, guys. That, you said like it wasn't your son, basically, which is well, not great. Well, but, yesterday. Yeah, we get to here. They're, they're okay. The months of kosher, which means are okay. Do you give any like kill counts ever? Like when how no, many no, no. how many terrorists they've, they've eliminated? It's not a competition or nothing like that. 
It's all, and it's all very oh, they say like, uh, high intelligence. Like, they're not going to tell us anything. Uh, yeah, yesterday, uh, the troops came in and neutralized. They'll say they did a good job. They maybe. did a good job. That's about what we'll get from them. Oh, they're they're moving clipus from the world. That's what yeah. they should say. Yesterday, they removed <laughs> some more clipus. Oh, well, yeah, we're not exactly to that, privy to that information. And we have to find out through the right. other ways. But Sha'anu um, Royam should be made tshuva. So we're going to see that empirically during these days of tshuva, Dinah Ba'el of Asayim made tshuva. And, and this is why he, essentially you'd think he'd bring up Shavuim now because Pasha Shmos. But um, he doesn't, but we can add in Shavuim. Shavuim is actually a hemshech of the, of these holy days of, right. the, of El and the 10 days of tshuva. What is it, what is it brought down on Shulchan Aruch? That Kaisal should be saying to him. It's brought down in Shulchan Aruch. It's not like, it's not like a minhag, a nice thing. Shulchan Aruch brings it down as halacha. Really? Maybe it's a minhag, based on a minhag, but it brings it down in a safer halacha as something that Kai Shul should be doing this time of year, of Elo and, and the 10 days of Tshuva, to say Tehillim, to finish all of Tehillim, you know, on, on, especially on the big days, Rosh Hashanah and Kippur. Kai Shul Aruch by Amiris Tehillim. Ki Amiris Tehillim Mesugu L'Tshuva. Because we, we just said, yeah, that Tehillim is, is going to help us, proprietors, or whatever the word is, going to help us do Tshuva. Aidei Kain Hu Dava Godom Od. And therefore, it's a very great thing, yeah, great thing, not just a, okay, you should do it, maybe. It's a very great thing, like Asok, Tamid, Bamir, Stenem, to be Asok, like we're learning Torah, right. like Asok, Bedivrei Torah, like Asok, to be Osik, to making business, to be Osik in, always, in saying Tehillim. Ki Tehillim, who's Oris Godol, Ma'od, Ma'od, La Hashem Yisbarach, Asher Yashachar, his boy. This is from Rabbi Nachman himself. Yeah, Ki Tehillim is awakening in a very big, big, big way, the Hashem Yisbarach, Asher Yashachar, his boy. And praiseworthy are those who adopt this practice to constantly say to him. Wow. That never is. And he also says, for us, Omer is a special time saying to him. And I would add now, based on the fact that this Rosh Yitzhak Tevis is Tshuva, and sorry, Tehillim and Tshuva, is right. in Pasha Shmois Shogavim. That's in addition. It doesn't say that in this explanation here. But I'm adding in. Because past, say for Shmois is the beginning of Shogavim. And really, right. Shogavim is all about Tshuva and Tehillim. Shovim is technically also, uh, what is it? Moser, Bo, Bishalf, Bishamashbrat. It's that whole process. Going out in Mitzrayim. Yeah. And, it, and what is it to do to get the Torah? And then what with the Torah this year with the leap year to bring it into the, the Mishkan and bring it to the Kohen Gold to bring it into Am Yisrael? That it should manifest what the Tshuva we're doing and the Torah we're learning should become reality of in this world. Dira Tachdona, it comes out in Ada, which is Loshan Aleph Dor, the Shem dwelling now in the world. We have to work now through Tevish, through Shvat, to get to that level of, of Kabbalah Torah, of receiving the Torah in Parshas Yisro, and then to bring it into the Mishkan, which is going to be in Chodesh Ada. And the Kohen God, or having someone manifest it. So every day, the Balatonia says, we have the opportunity to go out Mitzrayim. We get out of this, this constricted consciousness, right. and we go out. So I'm thinking about my son, or whatever you wake up, thinking about business, or thinking about you know your, your children, whatever it is. You're waking up thinking about something that's not the most yeah. elevated thought, and you're worried, and you're this and that. You've got to get yourself out of that feeling. And now, out of that Mitzrayim experience, Mitzrayim, the, the constricted place, and yeah. you go to shul, you put, you do your avoda, and watch shachris as a journey to get to become in front of Hashem all the way up, all the, through the different worlds to come in front of Hashem on the highest level. And and during that journey, there's a kabbalah satora, because when's the kabbalah satora? As soon as you finish the davening, the balatani says you should learn something. So we either have kriya satora, or you should open up a sefer and learn something for sure, even a few minutes, just open up something, and, and then you put the tefillah into the Torah. And then you've gone from Mitzrayim to Gabala Satoya. And what gave you the ability to get out of Mitzrayim was this was the tshuva and tefillah and the, the hillim that we say in every morning. It gives us the power to go out, to awaken those sharim, and to to come out to a higher level of consciousness. The Balatani says you start to get mochin. It has a rishima, like you said earlier, this idea of roshim on your whole day, that now you've tapped into Hashem and his Torah, and his and you've done some, hopefully some form of tshuva and davening of, you know, whatever you were in the restricted consciousness, whatever that caused you to do that wasn't so amazing, you didn't speak nicely, you didn't this, you didn't that, you weren't thinking positively, you get yourself into a good state of mind, and then you're ready to go do your thing. And that's every day going out, so I'm receiving the Torah. Right. So really we're living this on a daily level. This is what, what we experience in Sefer Shemot, Sefer Gula, should be on an individual level, a daily Right. Journey. 
you've got your paro, then bad voices in your head, these demons that David Goggins talks about, that these these voices beating you up every day, telling you you're you're no good, you can't do nothing, and you've got to fight them every day. With and we have the blessing of having Torah and Tefillah and Tehillah, and we have all these tools. Rabbi Nachman and the Sadiqim have given us, Rabbi Damas has given us. We have these tools to help us get out of this constricted consciousness, and that, that's a blessing. And all, all we have to do is just, like you said, we just have to turn up and do it. Now, do we always feel it? Feeling is not the goal. Right. We, we do have a mitzvah of Avas Hashem and Yurus Hashem to, to love Hashem and fear Hashem and to awaken our mochin is of Chochmah Bila Das to awaken up the Mayach in what we're doing to have Kavana right. it is a mitzvah to have Kavana it's a mitzvah to have Kavana they do need to have Kavana but it's not it, it, it doesn't mean you don't do it if you don't you keep doing it until eventually you start having Kavana right the point is, but that has to be the goal, not just to do it. Right. That's what Shlomo, I think, was worried about with the Shemana, it just becomes a thing you do. Yeah. You're not even like trying I to get to know, he Kavana. said that. That's so funny. I always, I, I, I always felt that way. He said it in the morning, Shia, to the women. Or to the women? Totally. Maybe to the men. He doesn't want to put them off doing it. I don't know. Ha. Yeah. But he's always so, trying to like these little subtle changes. I always find that the women do things a lot less mechanically than men. No, oh, yeah. it's they're much have, more kavana, much more heart. Whether it's because you know, they're much more the intrinsically is, connected. Yeah, for us, we you were it's, it's, it's a lot of mechanicalism. But that mechanicalism eventually breaks through to our stubborn hearts and opens Sometimes, them up a little yeah, bit. Hopefully, that's the goal. Yeah. That's one of the Hasidic things of making a lachaim, dancing, all these, using all the tools you've got right. to open up your heart. Stories. And, stories. Uh, we used to say, Rabbi Nachman said, this, he used to say stories to put our children to sleep. His stories were to wake us up. Right, yeah. yeah. That's, the, that's the, the fixing of the whole concept of stories. We're not trying to fall asleep, we're trying to wake up. Right, well, the reason why he said the story is because... Mm. I wasn't it like because he said I'm trying to teach you my Torah and you guys aren't, don't seem to be listening and so I'm going to teach it in a way that you guys can understand it better or that you want to listen. So stories people really generally get more involved in. Yeah. Did very Torah. So but it's also the concept that the stories are from Kesa, from the highest place, and that even the story of you see it's a story. See Paul Mitzvah it's a story. It's a story. Right. Going out recounting the right, story. We know the ending. The we know, but it's not even each time, every year we read it, we read it Seder night, we, 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 we mention it every day in, in Davening, see it say Zechus, see it say Sarim, we mention it every day. So the idea is we're tuning into this, this truth, this story that awakens our soul. It awakens, it's, it's, you have to understand in business nowadays, they've realized, I mean, I don't know, maybe they always knew it, but it's become more rev- talked about, more discussed, the power of narratives, the brand, yeah? Right. This whole. Building a building a brand, you know, uh, knowledge, having it, you know, clearer and clearer what the message is, what the mission statement is, what the story is, what the product, what the service right. is. It's clear, clarifying day after day. So in business, they're working so hard to get that better and better. Now that's what I mean. So our business is to make sure we got our story clearer and clearer, not getting all right. confused and woke and who knows what's going on. Yeah, because that, that's the problem when Jews start getting all liberalized in a, in a negative sense where we're all progressive in the wrong way, we're digressive, yeah? We're going right. downwards in our understanding of our story, and we're no longer really part of our story. So then, you know, at least consciously, even though phys- in the shama wise we're always connected. So it's sad if our consciousness has now been lost the story, like where people don't even know our journey and what we're here for. Right. So we have to have that self-awareness as a Jew, like right? that we have a unique story to teach. And you watch, like, say, Jordan Peterson, what's he doing right now? He has a new group about Exodus. I don't know if you've seen him talk about it. He did a whole... Th- I didn't go through the whole thing. I watched maybe one episode or something. But he goes through the whole Sefer Exodus, the whole book of Shmos, basically, wow. which is where we are now. And he's now got a whole movement. He's making money out of this, yeah, of teaching men to have self-control over their phones. And he's learning it out from the story of Exodus, of... Hmm. So he's taking out from our whole story of B'nai Israel and learning out how to help Am Israel get to a place of Gula. Uh, I mean, not Am Israel, helping the world, humanity generally, right. to get to a place of expanded consciousness where they're not enslaved to their phones and other things. Huh. 
and he's I making know. money. If you if you listen to Peterson now, it's, that's one of the main advertisements now. This whole like men's thing to get men less on their phones, like a detox, and it's a whole thing. But it's, it goes. But he's learning it out from say from our book, from from the Torah, from Exodus. And anyone who's an honest Yashkenik will know that anything good comes from Chumshim Chumshei Torah and Tanakh, and their their extra writings or whatever. But the 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 foundation is closer. Right. It's a Judea journey, the Judea wisdom, and that's right. So, this, but you see how it's so intrinsic, like what Rabbi Nachman did. He connected it in to the Havdu from Peterson. He connected it into the Tilim. He connected it into the Sharem. He connected it in to Sefer Shemos. He connected everything in. It all becomes united: the Torah, the Tehillim, the Tshuva, Klai Yisrael. We're intrinsic to these Sharem, to these gates of Tshuva. Right. Our names, the Shemus, the Osius, we are one with those. It's the whole concept of Kutcher Baruch Hu and the Kodesh Baruch Hu, the Torah, and Yisrael, Chad, who they're one. It's tuning into that truth. That was, the, for me, one of the most important Klalim of Baal Shem Tov, was Avis Yisrael, Avis Hashem, Avis Torah, to have love of all three. Right. You know, and sometimes, unfortunately, you experience these people who are learned and they have Avis Torah, but they don't have Avis Yisrael. So that's not true Avis Torah then. Because true Avis Torah will bring you to Avis Yisrael. To Avis Hashem will bring you to uh, Avis, Avis as well. It's all one. So you can't. Rabbi, I'll tell you just one, one we'll end off of this. Rabbi Simai Zilberg once said this very powerful concept that really changed my life when I heard it. Uh, it was a sh- Erev Shabbos. He gives a shir, a very long shir, a few hours on the Pasha. And he was talking about this concept of Avis Torah. And he said, You want to understand your Chalik of Torah? You have to have Avis as well. You cannot. Understand fully your full chelik Torah because every year is walking around with a chelik Torah. Mm. To light up my eyes to your Torah. You don't really understand the full Torah till you understand, have the full appreciation of all of Christ. Right. So you're never going to really access your full chelik. And Minashamai Mashkachapat is the people that are in your life, divine providence. They have their chelik Torah, and the only way you're going to access your full chelik is through them, because there's also a part of their chelik that's connected to your chelik. And the only way you can really get the full shleimus of Torah is through having the full shleimus of Avos as well. Right. Because every year is an os in the Torah. Every year is a letter in the Torah, and to have the complete sefer Torah, you have to have everyone in its place, in its time, in its portion. Everyone needs to have their portion of Torah. And that means you need to awaken around people with the love and the love of Torah, the love of Hashem, love of Yisrael. It's a very deep concept. But you're living with a certain truth that this is all one. This is not just like a, a nice vault. This is reality. Right. And you can't access the full portion, your full chalik of Torah, until you've accessed the full kibbutz of Klai Because what for example, if you put ink into, if you damage another yid, you're mm-hmm. breaking that os. So you're losing the full Torah. Right, losing the full... Uh, the full shlemus of Torah in Klai Yisrael. So, l'chas shalom. If, if the, it's not surrounded by, by uh, parchment, and you're right. getting in someone's space, you're ruining their... They're meant to have a space around them. They're not just meant right. to... It's their chalik, their portion. You have to give respect to it. And that's why you see by Siddiquim, their avis Yisrael, their respect to Klai Yisrael. It's on such a high level. And it goes together with their tremendous levels of Torah. It's the both is a joint journey. It's not like separate, right? And you see this if you think about this, how deep this is. To heal him, the osius of Kleisol, the names of Kleisol, the tshuva. It's all intrinsic. It's all together. All right, and that all leads to just Hashem returning to us. Uh, oh, and that's the highest. That, that's the best way to end this. The, the, and that's what that was the goal of it all. To Hashem come back to us, that we should have the full revelation Amen. of Hashem. Amen. All right. Yes. Good old day. But that was deep, man. That's good stuff. That was a good one. Yeah. And Mr. Shamal.